We are we go. Go ahead, Jessica. Uh, what was you saying about um, if you got kids, if you got three kids in the home and they're in different mm -hmm. grades, they have to be on light at the same time. Yeah, so then, you know, really what we're doing is, sadly, um, what happens is people who are already disadvantaged experience even greater disadvantages. And so while we have a, to, I, I, don't do that, buddy. While we have a two-tiered um, educational system already, those tiers are getting wide, wider apart, right? So those folks that have access, rem continue to have access and continue to do well, while those folks who had limited access or no access, you know, it's kind of this gatekeeping thing that occurs where they um, lose access in general. Right. So then I have, like I said, I have students who um, lived on campus um, and had to go home. Well, their home lives aren't necessarily conducive to online learning. Right. And so now, like I've been reaching out to the ones that I have good, I have good relationships with all my students, I hope, but the ones that I am really like concerned about. Um, been reaching out to them like, hey, yo, you okay? You know, and what I'm finding is that they go home, access, you know, and, and not just access, but also like, there's so many people dying, you know, and, and so many people, especially black folk, um, who may or may not have had access to healthcare as well, so now not only do I not have access to technology, but having access to healthcare means that I have family members who have died from, you know, from this virus. And so the ability to like, well, let me make sure I get my sociology paper done. That's not happening. Yeah, that's not, that's not the main thing on the, uh, on the <laughs> yeah, I get mm -hmm. it. And that's, that's what I, I wanted to address was the, uh, like you guys are extreme educators. I, I value both you guys' education. Um, my passion is the mental health side of it. How how does this wear on on the um, everyone, everyone in the entire world mentally, with dealing with these situations? Like um, like you said, the parent, the single mom, or the parents that don't have the money to have three laptops in the house, or uh, grandma just died from uh, the situation that's going on. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, and then I still got to push forward. And then grandma I or brother, like the, the number mm -hmm. of young people dying is is yeah. alarming. And then you got social distancing. I'm I'm now I'm disconnected from people. That, that right there can cause a uh, mental breakdown. You know, I'm disconnected because we're meant to be be uh, connected, and just not by social media or the internet, but actual physical you know, touch, you know, or physical being in the same space, you know, and by that's been taken away from us, it, it's, it's a breakdown in all levels, man. It's, it's, it's bad. Yeah. It's bad. No, um, I teach in a district that is probably pretty much below the poverty line. Mm. I mean, like a majority of the kids and, you know, and, you know, it's really been an experience for me because of, you know, trying to see those things that's of value, what these kids are actually seeing on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things, and I might sound like I'm all over the place, but the one thing that I immediately went into the school trying to do was actually let these kids know the power that they actually have to make change. Because I don't, I think in a, so many ways that the world has really twisted the thinking of our youth and some of our, and a lot of our parents too, mm -hmm. that, you know, like the world really cares about you and whether or not you make it or not. So I've always been in this, this, this mindset of everything that I talk about in school, it should be a preparation
for your mind state to say that you know what if i'm i don't care i don't care who the, i know i don't want to focus solely on the slavery part of things in u.s history but i want to focus on the people who were basically setting up this country and say this could be you right now these people started at a young age and basically you know because what they're going home and seeing because mother has to work a factory job. I'm talking to parents that basically when they get home, they're getting home at eight o'clock in the morning. They don't know whether or not they could kid went to class or not, went left, even left for school. They just know that they're not in at home. Kid left, and some of them kids don't even show up to my class. I'm talking to one parent, and she's like, Yeah, you know, um, I get home at eight o'clock and I, you know, I'm trying to stay awake to help them make sure that they get in this online schooling and things like that. But I'm telling you the truth. It's hard for me to stay awake. I'm working this job. I'm doing this. I'm making a run. I'm trying to make sure they can eat. I'm trying to make sure they do this. But she got, like you said, three kids. And so what the kids are seeing is, you know, usually when they get home, is either they're not seeing their parents, they're not having a conversation with their parent. So the person you want the information from the most is not there to give it to you. I mean, but I mean, uh, uh, granted that all being said in the old normal, right? Mm -hmm. Granted with all that being said in the old normal, it's no longer like that right now. And in, in, in the blink of an eye, that has changed. And the parents are home now. Most parents that work in the factory are at home right now. Now we're trying to see is how do we adjust in the new spectrum, you know, with the new things that's going on. Yeah, we had a moment where the parent wasn't in the home, they're working, whatever, they're busy. Now we got the parent back in the house. We got the kid back in the house. There is no line of communication there. And then the resources, are we lacking the resources. Kids not getting the education they need. Parents don't know how to do the educational part that they, that they need. Teachers disconnected from the students. How do we adjust? Because what you preached before, it doesn't work now in the new normal. We're, we're in a whole different mindset. Now, this is a whole different ball game. What we had before would never be again. So, so now you in a situation where possibly maybe now the parent is, now I don't have, I can't go to my job. I'm not getting paid. I have to wait on this check to come in from the government. I have to do, I mean, at the, the mindset of the parent then, who was already limited in resources, already limited in education, are limited in a whole lot of, you know, all these things, you know, cause, because the conversation wasn't there before, you know, um, you got social media because I mean, you're talking about breaking a bunch of strongholds, that phone that that kid carried around that kept that kid sitting in place, you know, that the parent allowed to have that phone sit in place and keep their, their child occupied. It's going to be the same tool that that kid is going to be using even with the parent is home. The parent, you know, you know, that, that's a very hard question. That's, that's a very hard solution. And that's something, uh, and if we can't, we can't put together a program where the parent could act, will actually come sign up. They say we, what we're doing right now. I mean, they could have something like this set up for, the parents say, hey, now that you're home, this is what you can do. There are resources out there for the parent to be able to, and I know my school has been sending out things like that to the parents. Be, but we, it's need, gonna, we need to get that information out there because every school probably not doing that. Because you put you just put a parent in the teacher role. Now, okay, so that's a twofold good, bad <laughs> situation, right? I mean, do y'all agree that it's a twofold good, bad? Right. And I mean, as someone who is, I have resources, I have um, education, I have, you know, I'm not missing a paycheck. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's stressful, you know, thinking about, okay, I got to make sure that um, my girls are on their calls every day. So now, now I am, like, I, I became a college professor because I didn't want to teach kids. But now I'm, I'm legitimately teaching kids because I am making sure that the girls are doing what they're supposed to do. And also I'm sitting for 
an hour, two hours, actually it's more like three hours every day working with the first grader while also trying to do my own work, right? So then I could not, I could not fathom what it would feel like to, you know, because of a global pandemic, I lose my job. Now I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. And my kid is like, I got to get my schoolwork done and be online. And I'm not, ex you know what I mean? Like, so that's a whole lot of stress. Um, I, I am personally a fan of, of this line of thinking. How do we create something that ensures that everyone has access? And not like, I was, I was in a session, I did a session with um, a college in Wisconsin. At this college in Wisconsin, we talked about like, how do we create equitable and just filled educational spaces? And someone in the room was like, well, you know, we can't, we can't ensure that everyone has access without also creating some barriers because by creating barriers, we'll see who wants it bad enough. And I was like, that is a really mm. terrible way of thinking, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Yeah. we got to see yeah, who wants it bad enough. Everybody wants it bad enough. Right. So we are actually constructing barriers to test their resolve to live and and by live i mean like have access to education have access to possible social mobility although social mobility is limited and people don't really, people stay in the same space that they're in typically for the rest of their lives like if i'm born middle class i'm probably going to be middle class for the rest of my life that has absolutely nothing to do with how bad i want it that has everything to do with the structure of society which when I say that though, that isn't to say, you know, people, there isn't personal response, personal responsibility. Although I think that personal responsibility, that term is a term that is rooted in oppression. It's rooted in oppression. Like, but again, though, I think there is something to say about personal responsibility, but we have to think about, well, what are we defining as personal responsibility? Is personal responsibility the idea that we are constructing barriers to see how bad someone wants something and then they have taken personal initiative to get over this socially constructed barrier so that we can see that's that's about us that's not about ensuring equity and justice you know and especially in a time like now in a time like now we should be doing everything that we can do within our power to create equity and justice because folks okay, so, so what i want to address is um because we know the topic is after this a new normal mm -hmm. so uh a question to both of you all what do you see our new normal being right now because we like we talked earlier before about we would never go back to the way you used to, never no matter if this goes away forever we will never have what we had january 1 2020 what do you see as our new normal and what's your take on how to adjust in our new normal all right um all right so personal responsibility uh i have to go back to history on that and no matter what you think about this country principles that were originally set up, it was basically, and I have to go to this, it was called the uh, social contract theory. Mm -hmm. So basically you give rights to the government, the government is supposed to protect those rights, but if the government abused this power and does not protect the rights, then it's on the people to overthrow that government or make changes in that government so that government is run properly. You know, um, one of the things, one of the one of the Bible verses that I hate, I, I, I'm not saying I hate it, but I hate that people use it because I believe they use it out of content when you're talking about people who live here in America. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar and give unto God what is God. And you have to ask yourself, who is Caesar here in America? Because what I see happening right now 
is going to make things so bad. It's going to crush things so badly that we are literally going to be living in constant uh, fear. I can see that. We, we're going to be living in constant fear. What the government, what the elites of this world have seen and put in place right now was so much fear, and they watched how the people reacted. They watched how the people reacted. And the one thing about it is, and you know, people were, we, we want everybody to be well. The one thing I think we forgot about is that God don't make mistakes and the fact that we, our immune system was designed for this. We also have to say, we cannot prevent everybody from dying. You, you got to back, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta back that up, bro. You got to back that up. When you say that our immune system was designed for this, that's not something you could just walk past. You got to explain that, if you don't mind. All right, so when you was a child, you didn't even know that your immune system was working. A lot of times you walking around, you crawling on the floor, you put your hand in your mouth, you done contracted something. You don't even realize what you contracted. If, just because of germs, your immune system comes into play. The more it comes in contact, a lot of times, the more it comes in contact with things, the more your immune system learns how to defend. So if we seclude ourselves, if we become where we go inside, we don't get sunlight. There's a beautiful thing about sunlight, vitamin D. Our immune system is always on the defense. If we take that away from our immune system, then it becomes weakened. It does not know how to react. Same thing happens with a lot of vaccine, vaccinate. When you give kids too many vaccines when they're young, at one time, that is destroying their ability to build up an immune system the natural way. So therefore, you know, the government way, I mean, you look at, first of all, what the government, look at what the government is pushing. They're not pushing, they're pushing to go to vaccines and we can't open up until we get this vaccine. Are, are we on mute? Okay, I thought I heard you saying something, okay. So basically, we as a people have to stop, listen to what government is saying and sort of start to, why are they saying this? What direction are they putting us into? Where, where are they taking this with us? Because now we're going to shut down, we're behind a sickness, you know, that we really don't see all the numbers on. Because from what I'm researching, what I'm seeing, what doctors are saying, every death ain't coronavirus. What happened to heart attacks? What happened to people dying from cancer? What happened to people dying from other complications? How many of these people, how many of these people that died already had a heart condition? How many people had diabetes? How many of these people were overweight, obese, and these things like this? How many so of these people were up in age? How many, you know, because there are, I mean, there are literally cases where there, um, as one I could share with you recently, Brother Harley, he, his, uh, his sister-in-law is going to the hospital because she has pneumonia. Her condition worsened. They tested her for COVID. They thought she had it. She didn't have it. They go into another, you know, go for a follow-up on her checkup. They're talking to the doctor and the nurse. They begin to tell them about someone who, someone else who had a heart condition and actually had a heart attack. It was labeled COVID. These hospitals right now are getting um, funding. They get more money for, uh, for the ventilators for diagnosing somebody and putting it on a death certificate now now you got to have you got to have something to back that up you got you got you got information where you can where people can find this at yes i record this information when i see it and i, I put it in my notes and i'm sorry that i'm not prepared to i should i was supposed to have this already sent to my email so i can pull it up but there is a whole nother story. There's, there's, there's underlying stories. Basically, we are allowing our government. We, we're either going to allow the government to take over and do whatever they need to do so that we can get back, so that we can get to this new normal you're talking about, 
or the people are going to have to uprise and start saying, no, I'm not, you, you, you're going to have to prove this to me. You're going to, I mean, you let me know what, gov what, what government has done, has implemented that really was a benefit to the people. Uh, I, 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 you, you come on with it. Come, come with a program that it was a benefit to the people on a whole that the government stepped in and everything is good now. You know, oh, woo, government stepped in and we straight. I like you, I like someone to be able to tell me that. So I don't, I don't, you know, my thing is coming from, I know there's an end game. Scripture talks about it. I don't care who's scripture. I know the Muslims are talking about it. The uh, Christians are talking about it. I mean, possibly the Buddhists are talking about it. I mean, whoever, there is an end game. Where, where, this, where this is going. One world government is real. Population control is real. So you think that the one world government is our new normal coming? Is uh, That's what we're approaching it to? It could be. I mean, but the, it's, it's, it's about what the people recognize. It's always about what the people, if the people, and this is what I'm getting back to, what I try to tell my kids as far as you can be the leaders of tomorrow, but it has to start now. You have to be able to broaden your options and take advantage of all the subjects that you despise. You need to learn it because there's a use for it. And the more you know, the more options you're gonna have. You don't have to go to college, but you better take advantage of every bit of information that you come across. You can be a leader. You can be the one that comes up with the new invention. You can be the next one that puts in policy. There's nothing wrong with you being a policeman in your community. You know, we got to get our people away from thinking about, you know, authority, fit, the so-called authority figures and start thinking about, you know what, maybe I need to be, the, be in that position. Maybe I need to work towards that position for change. Because that's, I mean, this mindset of, you know, allowing Caesar to go on and do all Caesar, but we elect, we didn't elect the Caesar. We are, the, they supposed to work for us. And that's, and that's where, that's, you know, it's that mind state that everybody is willing to allow that to just go. And I'm sorry, I, I can keep on. That's good. Let me, I'm let trying me, to let email me. myself. I'm trying to email myself so I can bring up these links. Yeah, go do that. Let me, let me, let me, let me um, go over to Jessica right quick and get our viewpoint on our new normal and what does she see and on what direction we might be going in. Jessica, you there? Yeah, so... Um, I'm honestly not sure. I don't know. Um, I think about patterns. I think the pattern is, the pattern is that we have a system that was not working for the majority of people. Um, but we also have a system that has tricked a bunch of people into believing that the system is fair and that it is just and that it is equitable. And so there are people who are, um, who benefit from the system, but then there are people who don't benefit from the system who are attempting to get back to a space. Um, one of my favorite writers and, um, uh, film producers, filmmakers, Robert Reich, he says, capitalism always attempts to write itself. And so I think there are things that we can never go back to, right? So the way that we do education has changed and, and changed forever. Um, but at the same time, what we'll see isn't something that is completely new, but rather a reincarnation of the same thing that harmed the majority of people, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the, again, the reality is things will never go back to the way that they were, you know, February 1, 2020, February 28, 2020, right? It'll never yeah. go back to that. Um, but, but also things change and then we, the question isn't, for me, the question isn't like, when will we go back to, or how quickly can we go back to, but rather how quickly will we adjust to something that is different? 
And that's um, key. Yeah, and so, you know, thinking about saying this to you the other day, but thinking about like, we go to the airport now and we don't question the governmental body that was created after September 11, 2001, right? Mm -hmm. Like prior to, prior to September, prior to September 11, 2001, there was no TSA. Um, now there is a TSA. Now you go in and there are long lines and you wait and you you know, you go through the um, metal detectors and, and all of that. If I, if my child is flying some without me, I can't, you know, go and sit with them at the gate. Well, I'm not sure if that's, but you get, you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. If my parents are, are traveling somewhere, rather, I should say my parents and not my kids. Um, if my parent is traveling somewhere, I can't go and sit with them at the gate because they're the ones that travel. I have a ticket, right? So now, the way that we think about flying has completely changed and we have adjusted to it. We don't question, well, you know, my parents are going somewhere. I can't go with them and say goodbye. We don't even question it because we have adjusted to it. So um, I am actually curious. I don't know what the new normal will look like necessarily, except for the fact that now I had to run to Home Depot the other day because I'm doing work on my house. And, um, you know, there's a line to get into Home Depot that's as long as Home Depot. And people are just walking to the end of the line. Like, people aren't, you know, oh, my God, we got to wait in this line. It's, okay, well, yeah, of course, we have to wait in the line. Um, and so, again, I think that in a lot of ways, we have adjusted to something um, that is a new normal, new normal um that's a new normal yeah i mean now will that remain after say october 2020 i don't know i have no idea um probably in some places it will if it benefits those who are making a profit but the reality is it all boils down to how is a profit being made right like in a system of capitalism, um, in a system that is rooted in ensuring that folks remain without access to things, um, some things will, people will attempt to go back to some version of what existed before. And they will be successful because we have tricked people into leaving this system is fair and that it is just and it is equitable. Meanwhile, the gap will continue to grow. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree with you. Um, just going back on some of the things you, uh, you guys are talking about, um, you talked about how um, after 9-11, we immediately adjusted. It was a new normal. Like you said, hey, go to the gate, walk parents your kids to the uh, plane, sit there, wait for them, get on a plane is good. Uh, post 9-11, um, you got TSA, long lines, nobody really complains, adjust quickly, just like. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I, I, I worked in the, um, in the Sears Tower in 2001. Mm. And I worked on the 93rd floor, on the 93rd floor of the Sears Tower. Mm -hmm. And, you know, September 11th happened and I didn't have to go to work. And then it was completely shut down for about a week. I didn't have to go to work for a week. Um, and then when we went back, there were structures that were put in place that changed the way we even went into, went into work, right? And, and we adjust. Okay, I know that I have to go to work. So since I know that I have to go to work, this is what I have to do to go to work. Um, and so again, and humans are the, the, the beauty of evolution yeah. is that we adjust to all sorts of things. Um, some good, some, you know, a little questionable, but we adjust to all sorts of things. And also we adjust and evolution occurs so that society will continue to perpetuate itself. Right. Right. So then 
we we have this i mean it's it's literally evolution uh, so again what the new normal will look like i don't know but i know after you know september 20th 2001 i had to go to work and i had to check my get my bag looked in and i had to right like people there was restaurants in the sears tower that people couldn't know or frequent so some of those businesses and restaurants um, were financially harmed because of something that happened on a uh, national or, or really that's a kind of a global scale, right? Like, so, yeah, sorry for cutting you off. No, you actually good. Uh, we got five minutes left on this video. I really want to start another one right after this, honestly, because it's yeah, um, going out. One thing that comes to mind, and you normally, you know, what – what did um, what did nine eleven do? What did nine eleven? It was a, it was another fear factor in nine eleven. We and then what? Who were we fearing? Who were and uh, you know at that time? It, you know because of that there was a boogeyman that, that basically arose. You know we had jihadis, we had Osama bin Laden, we had a whole bunch of these things and these these things that they placed put in place. It wasn't that, you know, even after George Bush went on his little speech and said, we won, none of these things ever, you know, these weren't temporary measures. They, they, they end up being there forever. I mean, one example of that is the income tax. That was supposed to be a temporary measure. Yeah, yeah. And it's been here for decades now, you know? Um, all income tax? Yeah, the income, yeah, income tax, tax was not meant tax to was be, um, not, not something um, basically that's been here. And because of war and things like that, they- Are you saying that the income tax came after September 11th? No, 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 no. He no, said- Okay, okay. No, okay. No, I'm no. like- No. Yeah, I called him. He, he, he told no, him. I'm, I'm, just going, I'm, going even, I'm even going back before then now. But like, anytime the government implements something based off of fear, it nev they never stop. It's not like- Okay, now we figured it out and got it resolved. So if we allow government at this time and this day with what they have done with the fear mongering and the marketing, because they're marketing COVID nineteen right now. This is this is this is not yes, I can't, you know a lot everybody, of people. Everybody, everybody has a commercial. Every time every way you turn around, you go on social media, everybody's talking about stay home. They got they got little logos that say stay home that you can place on your uh on your uh on your Instagram posts or your Facebook posts. You know, they're creating these things so it's constantly in our face because they don't they want us to become cool with this new normal that they are perpetuating. I'm not saying that people are not dying from COVID-19 by any means. I'm not saying people are not getting sick by it. But I am saying, and I will show you, I got the video posted, um, ready and ready to go, that these measures are not being told, it's not, they're not telling us the truth. And they're not being clean with it. And their solution for it is gonna cause more damage because you think about an economy like ours, whether it's cap, whether you know you don't think, whether you, whatever you think about capitalism, there are many countries that are depending on us, mainly third world countries. You shut down America, what happens to them? We want to talk about whether or not we care about the people and that no one could die. Well, guess what's going? Guess what's happening right now? Starvation is kicked up a whole bunch because of this. The farmers have stopped producing crops for next season. They are not planning because they have shut it down. The truckers are not getting the loads that they have to bring. It's not that we got a shortage in food. That's not why the shelves are empty. It's because they're just not getting it here. They have really shut us down, which is going to go worldwide. Companies depend on America. And if they can keep on, they're gonna keep pumping this beer. That's why you are, that's why you are here, uh, hear different politicians talking about no, we really should we really should wait 18 months. Like 18 months? I got a business. Who you who I work for myself. Who's gonna wait 18 months? You know. Uh, what's, what, does the solution Mark, Mark. cause a, a more of a fear, more, more something that's way more drastic than a few, than, than just, you know, 
we got, I got, I know we got to uh, shut it down and come back in. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna shut it back in. Hold your thoughts. I'm taking notes. Hold your thoughts. We're about to shut it down. We're gonna do it with this video, we'll edit it um, before we um, release it. We need to edit it faster and release it out there fast. But I want to okay. edit it so it can flow. But um, I feel like we feel the log out. We're gonna come back in. Jessica, is that okay with you? No, I don't have. I I gotta I gotta run. Okay, that's great. I got good footage from you. I got good information from you. I got good notes, questions I need to ask you on your on follow up. Um, if you get more time this week, let me know. And okay. um, we'll we'll talk. Give me a call later. Okay. All right. All right. Nice to meet you. All right. Definitely nice to meet you. Hopefully, we can do it All again. Right. Yeah. All right, Mark. I'm uh, for the uh, end of the video. Then we're gonna, um, let me know how to. I'm gonna call the phone so you can go through the um, hmm? go through the actual um, videos, right? Okay. Uh, then we need to come back and continue talking, or just between me and you, or. I don't know. We can. I just want to uh, let's look at that video and see what we can do with it right quick. Because right. I still there's so many questions I need to ask. So much information I need. So, all right. Cool.